Hi, welcome to the Mike Page Doodle Club. I'm Mike Page, and today we are going to be drawing a volcano. So grab some paper, a pen, markers, whatever you need to get to drawing, and don't be afraid to make mistakes. The important thing is that you make your mark. Park Street Books is proud to sponsor the Mike Page Doodle Club. Find them locally at 504 Main Street, Medfield, Mass. Open Monday to Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Sunday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Or visit parkstreetbooks.com no matter where you are. That's parkstreetbooks.com. All right, I'm going to be drawing very linear lines for this volcano. Um, and I'm going to start a little less than halfway down my paper. Uh, you could even use a ruler for this. Um, if you want extremely linear lines, I actually wish I was using a ruler, to be honest. Um, however, I am not for this one. Uh, but I'm going to try to keep my lines very straight and angular. And I'm kind of like kicking the pen out as I go. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm trying to make the summit of a mountain. So we're going up to the mouth of the volcano here. And I'm just, everywhere I'm changing angles, I'm putting a quick line down. Uh, again, kind of kicking the pen out. So I was in the Azores recently, uh, which is a Portuguese territory. It's a series of islands in the Atlantic Ocean. They're incredibly beautiful. I highly recommend the trip there to anybody that has the means to get there. Well worth the trip. Um, and. Those islands were um, created by volcanic activity. So I thought I would draw a volcano um, today. Those are all dormant volcanoes, but that's probably for the best. I'm not sure I would have been as excited to go if they were active volcanoes. It's a little more excitement than I really need on a vacation. All right, so this is going to be the uh, base of our volcano. This is, uh, I guess, a cone volcano. If you remember your science uh, classes from, I don't know, maybe sixth or seventh grade when you learned about, about volcanoes, there are shield volcanoes, which have a very gradual shape. There are cone volcanoes, which are very uh, pointed. And then there are um, composite volcanoes or stratovolcanoes that I believe are somewhere in between. All right, for, of course, I'm going to make my volcano erupting because that's more exciting. I'm going to keep things very angular. Uh, you can draw your lava how you would like, but I'm going to make mine very angular. And almost like, if you rem remember the Tiki episode, if you have watched that one. Um, I'm going to be drawing in kind of a similar fashion for this. So everything will be very angular. Um, and I'm going to have it so that the volcano is almost like curling around. Um, and again, being very angular as I go. Do the same thing coming out this way. That was not a straight line at all. I apologize. Again, this is something that ideally you'd be using a ruler if you want it to be really straight. I did a piece like this um, 
my senior year of high school, I did a volcano erupting, and it was in this style with very angular um, linear lines. And it was actually one of the pieces that I used to get into college when I had to show my por portfolio. Um, and I had done it as kind of a um, like poster art kind of thing for a concert that I had gone to. And you know, when you're in high school, you're like, this is the coolest thing ever. Um, I, I think I would have um, done it a little bit differently had I been a little older, but that's why I'm able to change things up a little bit now. And again, so I'm kind of curling this lava back. Uh, this is definitely one that I will want to color afterwards. If you leave this black and white, it won't be quite as fun. Uh, this is one that would definitely be begging to get colored in. Uh, you can also have some lava just shooting out without swirling around, just to kind of mix it up a little bit. Um, so the Azores I mentioned were uh, dormant volcanoes, but they do still have hot springs and Uh, there's a, a bunch of natural mineral water sources, and it's a very neat island. I think the, the best way to describe it would be it looks like Jurassic Park. Uh, just incredible green everywhere. Everything is green and blue. Unbelievable clarity of colors there. And it's it's like a too good to be true kind of setting. Um, but then the, the catch is that you've got uh, volcanic activity going on, I guess. Again, it's dormant now, but um, I, I do find it interesting, like uh, some of the s spots there have very strong sulfur smell because of the gases still being released. And I find it kind of fascinating that like there's people that just live there right next to this hot spring that still smells like sulfur. And I guess you get used to it, but I'm not entirely sure of that. Um, I think I might have gotten a little too carried away with all my lava here, so I'm going to stop there. Uh, and I'll just put like one or two coming down. All right, and then. I mentioned this is one that would be begging to get colored in, so I'm going to grab some markers here. Uh, I like to, oops, I like to blend with my markers. So if you've got some of these uh, Crayola markers here, they work really well. Um, I would do the darker colors first. But you find a, a few colors that are kind of in the same family, so red, orange, and yellow are going to blend nicely. Uh, blues and greens will blend nicely. You grab two that are close together in color, and you do the darker one first, and then the lighter one. And I like to color over the lighter one as I go. 
Uh, that way, when you get out to the white section of paper, it's going to blend that darker into it. Uh, if you do the lighter color first, of course, it's not going to blend. It'll just kind of be a darker color sitting on top. And then the further out I get, I think the lighter I will go. So now I'm going to switch to a yellow. And there are several different yellows. So you can, if you've got your own set of these at home, you can pick and choose which colors you're using, whether you're using all of your yellows or just certain ones. Um, there's also this one. I think this one might be the one that's like neon. Nope. Uh, if you want, you can also use some red in here. But again, whatever colors you're wanting to use, you just start with the darker colors and work your way up. And then with something like this, because they're abstract shapes um, and they're kind of all over the place, you're going to want to be careful, like this here is one of my lines going up. This section here should stay not blah, blah. Um, so you just want to be paying attention to which lines are uh, positive and negative space. What's the lava and what's not? Kind of like when, you, when you're a kid and you played the floor is lava. If you ever played that, I work with kindergarten and first grade kids and I can tell you that is very much still a game. When we are walking through the school hallway and you're trying to keep all the kids quiet, they can't help hopping from tile to tile because you can't touch certain tiles or you'll burn your feet. Everybody knows that. So this is the part of the video where they're going to speed it way up so that you don't have to just watch me color. When I was a kid, I kind of thought that volcanoes were like very much still a thing, that they were just erupting all the time, which is kind of true. There are places where there are volcanoes erupting, but I guess, I don't know, I guess like my dinosaur books had, had me convinced that they were like a serious threat to life, which that's another, that's another problem that you know, dinosaur books, there's always a volcano erupting in the background for some reason. Um, not sure how historically accurate that is. Uh, but yeah, I really thought as a kid, like, boy, I'm going to have to be careful of those volcanoes out there because they're out there waiting to get me. And to this day, I have never seen a volcano actively erupting in my life. Kind of disappointing but I guess it's also for the better. Okay, now that we have the lava colored in, it's time to make a quick, I'm going to put a sun in the background here. Um, again, I'm going to want it to be very angular, almost like I'm drawing a stop sign, uh, but you don't want it to come out looking like a stop sign, so careful how you do it, I guess. Um, and then I'm going to spiral in And then we'll put some very angular sun rays sticking out. I accidentally made those all kind of facing the same direction, which I did not want to do. Whoops.
think if I was restarting this, I would not put quite as many rays coming out of here. Maybe make a few wider ones, but not quite as many. Okay, so there's our sun, low in the sky. some orange in here near the middle and coming out and again just blending it I'm going over the darker color with the lighter color and then here's where they're going to speed it up again I bet Okay, now we have a sun. You could also add in palm trees over here. Um, I think if I was going to continue coloring this in, I would be using a lot of pinks and purples in the sky. Um, if you're doing palm trees, I would recommend using maybe some teals even. Not just green, but add some like really vibrant teal as well. Um, I think I might use some brown for this, but I don't want the volcano to only be brown. I'm going to test this purple over there first. Okay, so that I think will work with the brown. It's kind of important that you test that out first before you just go right into it. I actually got to cook my dinner in a volcano while I was in the Azores, which is one of the coolest things ever. Um, it's at a place called Burnesh, which I kind of thought, I asked uh, one of the locals there if it was named Furnish, if that means like furnace, because that, to an English ear, that seems right. And he said, no, I, I don't think it has anything to do with that. Um, but, so there's this place called uh, Furnace, um, and we got to go cook our dinner in the volcano um, so that all of the heat that's still there, it almost looks like uh, Old Faithful or something, like there should be a geyser right there. Um, so there's all this steam still coming out of the ground. Uh, and restaurants actually have like reserved spots. So like, you know, if it's Mike's restaurant, you know, this is our hole in the ground that we always put our food in. Um, and the reason the restaurants claim a specific hole is if they know this food was cooked here for six hours and it tastes exactly right, they know that they're getting exactly the same thing every time they cook their food there. Uh, which is really cool, like, you know, I have friends that still use a microwave every night, and here are people cooking their dinner in a volcano. It doesn't get much cooler than that. Or hotter, dad jokes, ayo. See what I did there? Um, and as I'm coloring this, I'm trying to keep it fairly angular. Um, so it would be silly to do all of the lines very angular and then color it in with like nice rounded edges and stuff. So I'm still, 
everything's kind of like kicking the marker out, having a nice sharp edge on things, uh, and then go from there. And just keep switching around between your colors until you get the look that you're going for. You don't have to be using the same colors as me. You can color yours however you'd like. I will not take offense if you're not following my lead. Might actually add some pinks into this as well. I had grabbed a pink out earlier, and then I never used it. Um, I don't think I want to use too, too much pink uh, because it might start really kind of taking over, but... All right, now we've got our volcano colored in and we're going normal speed again. And then I'm just going to put in a horizon line in the background. You can't have your volcano just floating in space. Um, unless you were only looking at the peak of your volcano, I guess. Uh, then this could get colored in. Again, if you wanted palm trees sticking over here, I think that'd be kind of cool. Um, you could make some crazy clouds in the background. Um, Maybe you've even got some pyroclastic flow on yours. Sky is the limit on how you want to approach this. Um, the key thing is that you stick to kind of angular lines if you're going for this look um, and have fun with it. Maybe you even want to check out the Tiki episode, uh, throw in some kind of Tiki inspired designs here. Uh, actually, if you wanted to do uh, palm frond leaves and stuff, I believe that episode had some uh, palms in the background, and those also got colored in, so you could see how that went, if you are so inclined. All right, this is our finished volcano. I hope you enjoyed following along. You can still color in the background if you would like. I would recommend purples and pinks, but do it however you feel it should be done. Tune in again next week. We will be drawing a cow, so don't miss that. Uh, and I will see you next week. Thanks for watching, everybody. Park Street Books is proud to sponsor the Mike Page Doodle Club. Park Street Books is an independent children's book and toy store. With nothing electronic in the store, Park Street Books encourages kids to read, play, and unplug. Find them locally at 504 Main Street, Medfield, Mass. Open Monday to Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Sunday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Or visit parkstreetbooks.com no matter where you are. That's parkstreetbooks.com.